because it means that she'll talk back to him now, apparently. Oh, that's true. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's another rule. If you give somebody a pretty, they can be a dick to you. Wait, no. <laughs> you mean- It's you, a bad rule. If you give someone somebody a pretty, you can be a dick to them. Right, well, that's the way it should be. I think we're all in agreement on that. No, we're not. Oh, well, hey, look at- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So the next witness that comes in is Grandma Honey and the Little Bun. <laughs> I like that. He asks the same question to her. Grandma, though, is a little fucking wily. I like Grandma. Yeah. I do. Questioning his interest in rumors and why he didn't just ride his happy ass to the palace and find out his damn self. Yeah, you're so curious about the death of the counselors and what they were doing beforehand and Kaylin's beheading. Maybe you could have gone to, like, the scene of all of those crimes. Yeah. Figured it out yourself. You're a dignitary. Like, you have <laughs> some more sway than I do to be able to go do that shit. I, right. I live down in a box on Stenter Street, okay? You can walk in on your fancy damn horse where I can't go. So Exactly. Don't ask me questions. Like, hey, isn't this your job? Yeah. Aren't you the guy asking people questions? I know that's what's happening right now, but I feel like if you chose better people, yeah, if you, get better questions. If you really wanted answers, you would go to the right places and the right people, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> it's revealed that he is interested in the mother confessor. And Little Bun, Lil Bun, <laughs> I like that, should be a rap name, <laughs> tells him that she watched the beheading, but won't say Kaylin is dead because she knows when magic is at play. You can't always trust your eyes, which uh, kind of goes with what we were talking about earlier. I feel like it is totally unnecessary to verify that after you have told somebody, I watched a person's head come off, that they have to ask you, is, is they dead? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they have to ask you, oh, did they die? No, I agree with you. And I think that the, that's maybe where there's a little bit of uh, weirdness in this conversation, because He's asking those follow-up questions like, oh, she was beheaded. Did she die? And then when somebody says something like Lil Bun says to him and is like, I don't know if she's dead or not, basically. He's like, what? Out what, of nowhere. What do yeah. you mean by that? Because well, why would you say that? What were you thinking it meant, sir? Why were you asking so many questions, sir? <laughs> sir, I'm being <laughs> polite, so you can't hurt me, sir. sir? And you smell a little bad. <laughs> My apologies. But the other thing is, this guy is a witch hunter, right? Yeah. How does Lil Bun know that there's magic at play? I don't know. Ooh! No, that this was a ringing question in my head. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy, Brogan, has a sister who is there who has magic so she can detect magic and help him figure out his way. And he talks to a little girl who apparently has magic of some kind because she is like, oh, magic's at play, so can't be sure. Like, how did you know there was magic at play? Nobody else in the town that saw her be beheaded thought there was anything funny going on. The Obviously, this little girl is tuned in somehow. The little girl or the grandma. Because It could be the grandma, yeah, but like... There's a couple of things them. in this conversation that point to them knowing more than just a honey bun bender should. Right. I just mean, okay, so it could have been the grandma that told the little girl. But, like, I don't know. Somebody knew magic was in play, and that stuck out to me as a big gaping thing that Brogan should have been like, how do you know about that? I think that he didn't say anything or like jump to conclusions about that because they do live in Aiden Drill. Um, there is a wizard's keep there. These people who live in the city have been surrounded by magic. So it's around. Yeah. They may have more of a feeling like he's from Nicobarisi where they don't abide by magic. They don't like that shit. Right. So the people in the town aren't familiar with what magic feels like in the air. So maybe the people in Aiden Drill are and so he's like accounting for that okay so there's there's a gray area and he's leaving it be especially because he wants information mm -hmm. that makes sense the whole time i was like oh he missed something huge <laughs> but maybe he didn't and he's just smarter than me great damn it <laughs> no it's just a magic town well still i'm a little bummed out <laughs> you know what might cheer me up oh i think i might know <laughs> you know very oh. very much 
Is it time for the beer break? It absolutely is. I almost could not wait to get to it today, you guys. You guys. You almost got a whole podcast about this beer because Nate couldn't stop talking about it. It is so good. Oh, my fuck. Okay. So, this beer is called, and you'll know why right away, too. This beer is called Chocolate Raspberry Imperial Stout. And the brewing company is called Untitled Art. Mm. And it's very deep, and it's very beautiful, and I, I like that, because beer is art. Yes. And I might just start crying a little bit, because <laughs> the beer they created is so fucking good. It's, I don't have words. It's just so good. Okay, so this is a stout. You hear chocolate. You hear imperial. You're thinking, like, chocolate, maybe a little coffee-ish. Gonna be dark like normal, but like um, maybe bitter, sweet, not fruity. The imperial is going to hit you in the tongue. First yeah, thing. none of that. No. The first thing that punches you in the face is raspberry, and yeah. when I say raspberry, I mean actual raspberry flavor, not raspberry like, not like some grape stuff is. It's like that's grape juice, and that is purple juice. It doesn't taste like grapes. It tastes like purple. Not like raspberry candies. Right. This actually tastes like raspberry with just a little chocolate on the end. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, the chocolate and the, the imperial that you normally hit up front is like on a smooth backside. And it's just very nice. I've been trying to get my hands on some untitled art beer for a while because I saw them on like a Michigan Craft Brew Facebook page. And I'm excited that we got it because that's damn good for an imperial fucking. It's good. Yeah, it's an Imperial Stout, and I took my first swig and immediately was like, that is not what I expected at all, and it is a hundred times better than what I thought it was going to be. It's 11%? So and Yeah, and, and, it and it's 11%, and it doesn't taste like it. Mm. I could drink a lot of these. This is a very dangerous one, and now I have exactly three reasons to go to Wisconsin, so we <laughs> might need to make that happen. Yeah, I agree. The, uh, the pirate ship, uh, Airbnb. Yeah. The, well, this beer. And then cheese, because I like cheese. So. Yeah, because we're not Kalen. Wisconsin, here we come, baby! <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, this is the only one of these that we have, and it's sad, because we just finished it. So, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be a little bummed out. But I'll survive, because I know where to get more, and that's definitely on my to-do list once we get out of quarantine. <laughs> Damn it. I have other beers for you. They won't be as good. but I'm going to need a lot one. to make yeah. up for this one. Yeah. I'm prepared. Well, let's go get those, and we'll be back right after this. Okay. Hey, guys. Nate from All The Things, and I want to talk to you a little bit about Four Acre Freedom. So Four Acre Freedom is a family-owned and operated one-stop shop for everything that you're probably already looking for. They've got vinyl laid shirts they've got hoodies and don't forget your beer koozies those are like essential we have some actually with the all the things logo on it and they look pretty sick just saying they've got custom made rings in jewelry which jade and i also have and they're fucking badass we got these ones you guys you guys it's like stainless steel but then there's a core jade's has like meteorite in it I think mine's got, like, dinosaur bone in it, and they glow, and it's, like, they're fucking cool. <laughs> I can't do it justice with a, with a microphone. You guys really have to see it. Again, we are going to post these on our Facebook page so you guys can get a better look at them. They're awesome. He can do custom woodwork and signs. Like, you want a badass grace or a quote or even, like, a picture of something from the book, he can do that. He's got a thing that just like it'll etch it all out on the wood real fucking cool you get exactly what you want every single time he can do leather work you want a custom sheath for your knife or perhaps your sword of truth you need a new belt he can do that too i mean you could put those two things together and probably make a scabbard just saying and also they have farm to table bread candies and confections which are delicious i have tried them every look look here's the thing Everything they do is of the best quality, and it's all literally handmade. This is not that kind of shop that just buys a bunch of shit cheap online, and then you get cheap stuff for a little bit more. No, the value is there. The quality is there. Everything they do is awesome, and you should check them out for yourself. They're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and of course, you can check them out at 4acrefreedom.com. High quality, handmade. 
And we're back. Okay, so Brogan says that magic is the keeper's taint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your eyes got so big when you looked at the first line. You're like, <gasps> yeah. Well, he said it. He said the thing. He said the thing. He said the thing. And I mean, is that why I heard you chuckle from the living room the other day when you were by yourself reading? Yeah. Did you get to this? Yeah, and you're probably. Like, Mm. Yeah, probably. Because <laughs> honestly, no, like, the keeper's taint probably is pretty like evil and gross. Bad? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I would assume it's gross. I feel like this is like a very good uh, analogy if you're trying to get people to understand how evil something is. Be like, that's like the keeper's taint, man. You're like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh. <that's bad. laughs> Okay, sorry. I am definitely not 12. Okay. <laughs> Grandma Honey says magic isn't evil. Okay? It isn't good or evil. Just like the knife at his belt isn't good or evil. Or right. gun. He, she doesn't say gun. But, like, a gun isn't good or bad. It's just right. a tool. And the people who use it make it good or bad. 100% true. But the magic in Aiden Drill is being used for good and bad. It always has been that way. Like... It's, like, intrinsically, wo- like, woven into the city. The good and the bad magic has just, it's always been there, working from both sides, for both sides, against both sides. That's how it fucking goes in Aiden Drill, okay? Right. It's a magical city. Yeah. And so it's still happening. Like, right now we're dealing with the Marizwith. That's bad. And the only thing that can really deal with the Marizwith is is a good magic that's that's beating the Marizwa. Yeah. <laughs> and she implies that she knows Lunetta is using a magic filter on her words. Like, she's pulled her from the street and is filtering her words. But she says it in, like, a like a, a pokey way. Like, she's like... Right. Yeah. Some people are even getting dragged off the street and having their words filtered by magic. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Which you is dick? funny because <laughs> she's, like, also implying that, hey... Maybe it is me, right? You're probably right. It's the grandma. Yeah, is aware of magic. Yeah, I, and I, he's yeah. she's letting him know that. Yeah, and second, he's motherfucker. He she she he he's a she she's a he. It doesn't matter. It's twenty twenty one. Pronouns. It really doesn't matter, honey. <laughs> Ma, honey, or G, honey. We'll say G, G honey. honey. G, honey. G, <laughs> honey. <laughs> <laughs> She is also, like, pointing out that he's the bad thing that's happening. Another bad thing. A bad use of magic. On top of letting them know subtly that she's aware that they're using magic. Yeah. And she also tells him that somebody fascinated with fire could easily be burned in this town. Basically saying somebody fascinated by magic could be exploded. You know? (laughs) like Could be exploded. (laughs) Fuck around and find out, buddy. You, You should probably leave. Before anything bad happens. That's like, <laughs> look, look, buddy. I'm not saying nothing, okay? All I'm saying is people have accidents. Yeah. They happen all the time. <laughs> right? No, it's not the rat. We're cool. We're cool. Yeah. Shit happens, though. People get hurt. Yeah. Just saying. Weird shit. People go missing in this town. All the time. Hmm. Anyways. <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> See you next week, okay? <laughs> okay, bye. Brogan asks her how magic can revoke death, and she's like, uh, only the Keeper can do that, duh. But that's not what happened. The Keeper didn't, like, raise her from the fucking dead. And Brogan is, like, confused when she says this, because that's where he was going in his head with all this. He is, like, centrally focused on the Keeper being the fucking problem. And she tells him he needs to, like, back his view up a little bit, because magic can create a ruse like a death spell. This wasn't the keeper. And she's not saying that this is what happened. She's saying this is what could have happened. It's just, it's so oddly specific. Yeah. That this is the first thing. I mean, maybe it's because it's apparent to people who know. Mm-hmm. If you were aware of some fuckery around a death, then they're like, this is your number one choice of what it could have been. Yeah. No, it is. it is definitely weird because she's... They're very clearly implying that there's a good possibility that Kaylin didn't actually die. And then she's giving a very plausible explanation for why she could have not died or how she couldn't have not died. But then she's also saying, I don't know, maybe that didn't happen. Okay. But it could have, but probably not. 